praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Finally, we start the series today, winning the war. Now, while we are on the way pre preparing for this series, there was nothing in West Africa at that time. Suddenly there was coup in Niger. And West Africa, the ECOWAS, the economic uh, 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 countries of West Africa responded. And there were rumors of war. And up to now, it shows that war is real. Join me. Join me as we dive, dive into the word of God. I am Kola Emiola. Take your pen, take your bottle. Let's go. Hallelujah. Now, let's check clearly. Today, I want to explain this word, war, or war it, or fight, from the New Testament perspective. Because sometimes when you talk about war, people think it's just in the Old Testament. But the, this is the problem. There are two types of people in the church that I've found. Those who think that there is no war. And so what happened? They become victims of every war. And those who think life is all about war, they fight until they enter into burnout and become a victim of the devil. Whichever group, the devil likes it because it you chose you are ignorant of his devices. Now listen, the devil is never a creator because he does not have the creative ability. All he does, he uses the same method. Let's go strictly into the word of God today. Let's start from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse number 11. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. Verse number 11. Say with me, I believe the word of God. And I know that the word is the final authority on every issues of life, on every topic, on every decision that I make in life. The word of God is a final authority. So Kola will show me the word of God. But I believe the word of God. And I believe Kola is sent to me today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 2 Corinthians 2, 11. Look at it. The Bible says, Lest Satan shall take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now I'm going to read it from different versions so that you get it. I read from NLT. So that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with the Evil schemes. I read from the Amplified Fashion, my friend. Amplified Fashion. To keep Satan from getting the advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his wise and his intention. Now, that word device means his thought, his mind, his, uh, his inward reason for fighting. We have to, the Bible says that we should not be ignorant of the thought of Satan, of his mind, of his intention, of the reason why he's waging the war as we see. Now this war, like in the Old Testament, most of the time they fight physically. They carry gun, they carry all those things. In the New Testament, we are not carrying gun. The war that we fight mostly is within us. Join me in this series as we go. Uh, you say, Kola, but I thought you were going to deal, I'm going to deal with how, how to undo witchcraft and curses. I'm going to deal with how to undo some other things. Now I'm going to do that. But let's lay the foundation right now that this war is not about carrying gun or stuff like that. We have enough weapon in the word of God to keep the devil where he belongs. Hallelujah. So the word of vice means he's taught. We know he's taught. John, the Bible, the Bible says in the book of Gospel according to St. John, the Bible says that he comes to steal, 
to kill and to destroy. So we know his thought. We know that is what he want to do. We know that was his agenda. He want to steal from you. He want to steal your health. He want to steal your money. He want to steal your finances. He want to steal your marriage. He want to steal your spouse. He want to steal your children. He want to steal your ministry. He want to steal your peace. We know. That's why NLT said we are familiar with his scheme. We know his intention. We know that if what we're passing through is not good, definitely it's not from God. How James chapter number one, verse 17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift, if it is good, if it is perfect, the Bible says it comes from the Father of light, with whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. What does that mean? The shadow of God does not turn. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What is the intention of God? We know that he says, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. John 10.10, 10, abundantly. Some amplify it that you might enjoy life to the overflow. Jeremiah said that I know the thoughts that I have towards you. The thought of good, not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. So if it is good, it is from God. If it is bad, it is from the devil. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And if it is good, it's from God. There is nothing good in the devil. All he has is evil. He never has good plan for you. So the Bible says we must not be ignorant of his thoughts. We must not be ignorant of his schemes. We must not be ignorant of his devices. His devices, his thought. Why? He walks with thought. He walks with our mind force. He fight our mind force. Let's check in the Bible today. Well, in the New Testament, I choose not to go into the Old Testament because some of you say, oh, but I'm a New Testament believer. Well, I'm under grace. The Bible does not exempt us from the word war. Let's go. Let's check everywhere the word war appear in the Bible. First Timothy, chapter number one. Let's start from there. Chapter number one. No, let's start from Second Corinthians, chapter number uh, Second Corinthians, chapter number ten. Second Corinthians, chapter number ten. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Chapter number ten. Now take note. Now I myself, Paul. Beseech you by the, by, by the gentleness and consideration of Christ himself. Now, let me go to, let me go to, let me go to New King James so that we can be fast. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Who in presence am lowly among you, but be abs, but but being absent, I'm bold towards you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold. Now let's jump to verse number three. Look at verse number three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk, take note of that word, according to the flesh. Now go further. For the weapons of our warfare are not cannot. The word warfare is the same. Warfare. For the weapons of our warfare are not cannon. It's not gun. It's not armor tank. Are not, it's not those are not the fleshy ones. You remember David said, I have never tasted this before. I've never tasted it. I've never tasted it. I know how God has helped me to kill the bear, to kill the lion. But this one that Saul has given me, I have never tasted it. So, so for the weapons of our warfare are not cannon. But mighty in God. Why? For the pulling down of strongholds. What is stronghold? A strong mental belief, a philosophy, something that held your mind. But this weapon will pull down stronghold. Remember, we are, we are not ignorant of his thought, of his intention, of his mind. So, his mind. Amen. So, uh, for the pulling down of stronghold, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought. So 
If you look at this, I've not seen that Paul mentioning devil here. Everything Paul is still saying has to do with our mind. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all of them when your obedience is fulfilled. When will your obedience be fulfilled? When you bring every thought, every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Let's read that place from, from Amplify, please. I just want to show you something today. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Look at it from verse 3 again. For though we walk, live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapon of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of stronghold inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasoning and every proud and lofty thing that set itself against the true knowledge of God will lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Being, ready, being in readiness to punish every insubordinate for is disobedience when your own submission, obedience as a church are fulfilled, secured, and complete. Now, 2 Corinthians 10, this is where many people use to fight the devil. There is no mentioning of the devil here. Paul wants you to first deal with your mind. Like I said yes, somewhere yesterday, until God can speak to you, you cannot speak to the mountain. I'll say it again. Until God can speak to you, you cannot speak to your mountains. I say it a third time. Until God speak to you, my friend, you cannot speak to your mountains. Okay, second, second Corinthians. Let's go again. First, first Timothy chapter number 18. I just want you to see. So we see one. Paul was talking about our mind. First Timothy 18, please. Thank you, Jesus. The, uh, from Amplified, this charge and admonition I commit in trust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with prophetic initiation, which I formerly received concerning you, so that inspired and aided by them, you may wage the good warfare. Now, take note. What was Paul saying here? Some translation says that you may fight a good fight. So, what is Paul saying? Asking Timothy to do to fight. He's saying, make sure you focus your mind on the word of God that has gone over your life. Make sure you wage war. What does that mean? Make sure that you stay focused to your assignment. Your assignment is the prophetic word that has gone over your life. Make sure you stay focused. Now, let me tell you, the greatest battle you will fight in your life is not against the devil. <laughs> it's distraction. What does that, what do I mean? The devil is, may try to influence your thought, may influence your thought, but Paul does not say the devil is your main Challenge. He said, your thought. So he said, look, take hold of this prophecy. Stay focused on your assignment because the devil will do everything to distract you. That's why I said in my book, Doing Something Big, the greatest battle you will fight in life is not against the devil, but against distraction. Every day of your life, you have to stay focused on your assignment because there are 1,001 things that are trying to to distract you. Satan will try to steal your focus on your assignment. He will try to steal your attention all the time. If you don't give him attention, it won't be long. Hallelujah. You will not look, see the devil again. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, if your eyes be single, your entire body will be full of light. The devil want to fight your 
attention, want to fight your focus, want you to lose sight of the word of God that has gone over your life, want you to forget the prophetic word that has gone over your life, fight that you don't forget it. Write it somewhere in your house. Make a declaration about it every day. Tell yourself, I'm becoming this prophetic word. Tell yourself, I'm invading the vision with this prophetic word that has gone over my life. I refuse to be distracted. Fight for your focus every day of your life. Amen. Another place, first place, our mind. Second place, fight for your focus, fight for your attention. Stay on the assignment. Stay on what God has called you to do. Second Timothy chapter number two, verse number four. I'm just trying to show you today different places where the Bible talks about war or warfare in the New Testament so that we can lay good foundation before we begin to fight the devil. Now listen, the devil is already defeated. Hallelujah. Cool. He's a defeated devil. We are only enforcing the victory of the cross. Jesus already finished the devil. And there is nothing with the devil to fight back. Are you still with me? Don't go yet. Second Timothy chapter number two, verse four. Now, soldiers, when in service, get entangled in the enterprises of civilian life. His aim is to satisfy and please the one who enlisted him. Let me read it to you in New, New, King, uh, New King James. No one engaged in warfare, entangle himself with the effort of this a fear of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. What does that mean? Stay the same, same thing. He's talking about stay focused, single-minded. Let your mind be single. Stay on your assignment. Fight for your focus. Fight for your attention. Do not let the devil steal your focus. Paul was telling Timothy, don't let the devil steal your focus. He will try to steal your focus. He can steal your health if he doesn't get your focus away from the word of God. He can steal your marriage if he doesn't get your focus away from the word of God. He can steal your business if he doesn't get your focus away from away from the word of God. In fact, I'm going to teach a part of this series on fighting for your business, fighting for the soul of your business. He can steal your peace if it doesn't get your attention, friends. Hallelujah. Let's see James chapter number four, verse one. James also talked about this. 4 verse 1. Oh, where, where do wars, do you see again? Where do war and fight come from among you? So they, so they not come from your desire for pleasure, that wars in your member. What is what James talking about? Flesh. He's saying that, look, you have to... Put your flesh under. You have to control your flesh. That is where war is coming about. Does that sound like my mind again? If I control my mind, I can control my flesh. If I control my thought, I can control my flesh as one. Because your flesh will go in the direction of your thought. Think sickness too much, you'll be sick. Think poverty. Think lack, you'll fall into poverty. Think, think evil, you will do that evil. First Peter chapter number 2, 11. And I will stop for today. First Peter. Where are you, Peter? First Peter 2, 11. Be, beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pregnant, abstain from freshly lost which war against the soul. Do you take note? Fleshly law works against the soul. What is our soul made up of? Will, intellect, your mind. So if you look at all this, in the light of this, as far as Paul is concerned, in the light of the New Testament, the greatest battle we are fighting is not against the devil. It's your mind and your flesh. The more renewed your mind is, the more you walk in victory. 
The more you submit your mind to the word of God, the more you walk in power, the more you walk in the anointing. The more you allow the word of God in your marriage, the more there is peace in your home. The more you let the word of God rule your mind, the more you can triumph in your business and your career in your ministry. The more you let the word of God guide your children. Let me say this to parents. I always tell people this. Parents, hear me clearly. Don't raise your children with fear. Use the word of God to raise them. Do refuse to control your children with fear. Allow the word of God. Speak the word of God to them. Let the word of God mold their life. Fear has never produced anything good. That's why the Bible said God said himself in the word of God. He has not given us the spirit of fear. The Bible also said perfect love casted out fear. You can live your life in fear. The more your mind is renewed, the more you can put your flesh under control, the more you stay in victory. My friend, we are beginning this series. Maybe tomorrow, I will start the one on how to undo witchcraft and how to apply the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, my friend. I hope you are blessed. In fact, I believe you are blessed. If you have any question, don't hesitate to write me. I will personally address that question. I love you. Thank you for giving me this time of your day. God bless you. Love you. I am Kola Emiola. I love you so much, my friends.